What's going on? It's Mike Adam. We're in the Gwynedd Mercy University Artist Lounge. I'm hanging out with Justin Hires. Uh, this man is a comedian, an actor. What else are you doing? I fly. You fly? Yes. Yeah, crazy, <laughs> man. Uh, yeah, but I, all of that. Uh, you know, I direct, I write. Um, yeah. So the big thing we're, we're here to talk about is uh, Rush Hour. They're coming out with a TV show uh, this month, the 31st. And you play Detective Carter, yeah. who is played by uh, Chris Tucker. Was that was a little... Was played by Chris Tucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that a little nerve-wracking going into a role like that? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I tell everyone, um, Chris Tucker is literally one of the reasons why I got into stand-up comedy. I, I'm a huge fan of him. He he has had a, a tremendous impact on who I am as a stand-up comedian. Um, and so it was a huge honor and a privilege, man. And uh, But on the show, I'm not doing a Chris Tucker impersonation. Um, I'm bringing myself, Justin Hires, to this character. And uh, hopefully uh, when people start to watch the show, they'll, they'll see what I do and see how my uh, comedic sensibilities and delivery is slightly different, well, very different from Chris Tucker and appreciate it. That's what I was going to There's got to be a fine line because you probably, I mean, you want to still attract the fans of the movies, but you also want to make it your own. So how much did you reference his character and how he portrayed it? I, I, may, I made it a point to make it my own you okay. know i already knew it's going to be a lot of comparisons between myself and chris tucker uh and so what i wanted to do luckily i'm a stand-up comedian i've been doing stand-up for almost nine years and in that time you kind of develop your own comedic voice yeah. and so i wanted to make sure that i was bringing my comedic voice to this role um and and there's only one episode that i kind of do my homage to chris tucker and it's a do you do the dance Maybe. And, it, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's funny you say that. And it's literally one of the best scenes that I saw out of all the episodes uh, when I kind of do that homage to Chris Tucker. Yeah. Did you get a chance to uh, chop it up with him at all? Have you met him before? Or? I have met him before. Not when I booked the show. I, I haven't spoken to him since I booked it. But, however, he saw me perform stand-up comedy uh, maybe like three or four years ago. It was at, a, at the comedy store in L.A., and I was doing my stand-up. He was in the audience. I stopped my set, and I said, yo, I just want you to know you're literally one of the reasons why I got into comedy, and I love you. And he was like, I love you too, man. <laughs> uh, and so that was cool, man. That's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. Very, very uh, foreshadowing of the the future, man. Absolutely, That's absolutely. Um, so, hardest working man in business. You you actually have a comedy show the night uh, that Rush Hour debuts, right? Yeah, with well, that same weekend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, Rush Hour debuts March thirty first. Uh, the same weekend, I'm headlining at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank, um, April 3rd. And then I'll be going on tour. I'll be in Denver. I'll be in Baltimore. I'm going to New York. You know, I'm, I'm going all over. Yeah. Are you ever, once once this takes off, are you just going to be like, eh, forget stand-up? Are you ever going to get too big for that? No. I mean, you know, stand-up stand up is the one thing that I kind of control. You know, that's the one thing where I, I don't have a leash. I'm not censored. I could really, really... I, I like the audience to really, really get to know who I am, Justin Hires, and I feel like um, that's my opportunity to for the audience to not only really find out who I am as a person, but to also really thank the fans and really be able to uh, talk talk to them, you know, on a personal level. Um, yeah. What's, what's kind of your joke writing process like is it a lot of personal stuff or is it from things you view in the world we met we called each other uh this morning yes, <laughs> we like, did. Well, what you win I was, <laughs> I was like all right i'll do brown then right, we'll, right. We'll be good. <laughs> um well it's funny you say that well, you typically i kind of use the the chris rock method okay. which is i kind of go on stage with uh bullet points of things that i think are funny uh, typically from my life, I talk about, like right now, a lot of my material is about rush hours, it's about my family, yeah. it's about uh, uh, the uh, being disrespected <laughs> when you're trying to come up in Hollywood, you know, uh, and so it's really, it's a lot of self-deprecation, um, and so, but I go on stage kind of with bullet points of things I want to talk about, and when I'm on stage, I start to talk and flesh it out, um, and, uh, you know, hope, you, you hope that something funny comes out. Speaking of Chris Rock, I know uh, you're a big fan of his. He's one of your, like, what, top three yeah, comedians? Yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you think of his opening speech at the Oscars? I thought it was great. And, you know, actually, I was able to see him work on that set before the Oscars um, because he was at the comedy clubs working on that material. So I actually saw it. I see him perform that set three times before the Oscars. Um, and, you know... 
listen, I think Chris Rock is one of the best stand-up comedians ever. Um, I think he hand, handled it uh, brilliantly. And, you know, it's a tough gig. Everyone knows the Oscars is literally one of the hardest rooms to do as a comedian. And, I mean, anybody that could get laughs and applause breaks from that audience, they, they know what they're doing. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. I thought it was great. Um, I, was, I was on your Instagram a little bit, and I saw you with all these comedians uh kevin hart one of my favorites uh who up to this point in your career who have you met that you've been most excited about who probably martin lawrence okay um i was a huge fan of martin still am a huge fan of martin lawrence growing up um you know what he did as a comedian um you can see a lot of that in my own stand-up um the same way uh, martin lawrence and Eddie Murphy kind of looked up to Richard Pryor. Yeah. That's kind of how I looked up to Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. Um, but uh, Martin Lawrence, definitely, Chappelle, um, Chris Rock. I mean, you know, all, all of those guys. I'm kind of like a comedy nerd. Someone said called it a comedy historian earlier today, but I'm kind of like a comedy nerd. Uh, so all those guys I'm always excited to meet. When, when you met all of them, were they uh, everything you expected, or was anybody a little standoffish? Or? Well, I got a joke about uh, meeting Chris Rock. That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, you got to see my stand-up to see that story. But, uh, but for the most part, everyone has been very, very nice um, and uh, been encouraging. Because I imagine there's some, like, big no-nos when you're meeting other comedians. You probably can't run up and be like, hey, I'm a comedian, too. That's what I learned. Oh. <laughs> that's what I learned. They okay. were like, okay. Chris, Chris Rock was like, okay, all right. Yeah, just, I feel uh, yeah. like that's 101, man. You should have talked to me before you met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, so you kind of you kind of learn that, you know, coming up. Mm -hmm. Awesome, dude. I was uh, I was digging on your Instagram. I was like, you know, 42 weeks deep or whatever it was. Oh, dope. You know, I, I was looking in there, you man. You were creeping through my Instagram. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was, I know I was. And what's the, uh, what's the situation? You're married? I am married. Where is wifey on Instagram? I'm glad you say that. My wife likes to be behind the scenes. She, okay. She's not like a fame. A, I feel like, you know, I feel like some some women, it could come across like they're with their man because they also want to share the spotlight. Right. Um, and that's not her. You know, she's behind the scenes. She likes supporting me from the background. And I feel like, you know, when you're in the entertainment business, so much of your life is public. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I try to keep somewhat of my life. So I don't have any pictures of my daughter okay. online at all. You know, I don't yes. want anybody just being able to see my daughter like that. Yeah. Um, so I try to keep some things private. Um, and then everything else is for everyone. But in my stand-up, I talk about my wife. I talk about my daughter. I talk about all, all of that in my stand-up. Gotcha. See, that's what I have to say to my wife. You know, I don't want people to think <laughs> you're in it for the fame. Right. So I'm, I'm going to take you off my Instagram. Right. She's like, where I'm at, dog? Yeah. They yeah. don't know you married. He got a ring on. He got uh, the ring man. on. Listen, I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, the show is March 31st, Rush Hour. It's going to be phenomenal from what I've seen of it already. Uh, what else do you want to plug, man? Um, Yeah, if I'm in, in your town, come see me uh social media i'm on all of that twitter instagram snapchat facebook is all justin hires like tires but with a h hires awesome justin hires thank you man thanks for having me absolutely all right